Hey YouTubers, um, I try to make these videos five minutes or less, but I, it's just too much, I can't do it. But uh, I have an anomalous energy, uh, I cannot figure out what it is, or where it's coming from, and uh, this pretty much stemmed off of the Foggle patent, or replication, and um, I decided to take the power supply completely out. And uh, so, what this is, is just a loop right through here. It's just a loop going through the switch. Alright, right here. Uh, and then through the coil. And back out the coil. It's just a loop of wire with absolutely no power supply. And I have it running through this capacitor right here. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I can't figure out what this is. I want you guys to replicate this if you can. Uh, I'll provide the schematic for it. Um, so you can see and follow along. I'll make a breadboard. I didn't make a breadboard schematic for the last video because I actually have improved upon it. So, I'll provide one in this one with the new and improved version. So, right now, I have this shorted, this capacitor right here. So, this capacitor is, like, on the secondary of this coil. This is a bifiler coil. Um, I'm pulsing nothing, absolutely nothing, through the primary. And the loop I just showed you here. So, it's going back into the, uh, the capacitor and then to the emitter, the switch if it's a transistor, and then out the collector. It's, this is a MOSFET, so it's going into the, the source and then coming out the gate. Or, uh, I mean the drain. I'm sorry. And, uh, I, it, this, I just don't know. I, I honestly don't know what this actually is. Um, I've even bypassed the switch and just connected the, the, uh, the loop bypass the switch through the loop and just connected basically the emitter back to the uh, collector basically if it's a transistor and I kept this on I kept that on to see if I was emitting something from the chip or somewhere in the wires but really there should be absolutely a complete uh, there should be a complete isolation keeping this power supply separate from whatever is in here. So, look at this. Check this out. I have this on zero. And I short it out. And this capacitor is on secondary. I think I mentioned that uh, right here. It's on the secondary. And then, uh, like you would if you were catching a collapsing magnetic field and pulsing a primary coil and then catching the collapsing magnetic field over here. But the thing is, there is no power supply in this. Um, over here is the voltage that uh, is sitting in this capacitor right here in the loop. In this loop with no power supply. And now watch this. I'll turn it on. Uh, let me take the short off. Okay. I'll turn it on. Now look at this. I got this voltage climbing towards one volt. And even a volt over here. And if I shut it off, we got 2.83 volts over here. And 1.20 volts over here. And this smaller capacitor. Okay, if I were to charge this small capacitor up, and give this loop a power source right here. Let's do that. Uh, if I can get this on there, let's give it a quick little charge uh, on this capacitor right here. I'm just going to charge it up with this little double A battery, which you can see charges up the one point. 30 volts, 1.3 volts, and it's draining, meaning that this switch is working great, it's keeping it open from the loop until I turn it on, and I, I took 
the battery off. So there's the charge, and it's dropping. And we short this back out to zero. And I'm going to pulse this power that's leaking out of the capacitor and get the output in our capacitor over here, which is much bigger. This is an 82 microfarad capacitor, and this is a uh, little tiny 4.7 400 volt microfarad capacitor. So uh, I shorted that out, and this is still draining from our 1.3 volts. But watch this when I pulse that little double uh, A power. Look, look at that. It, it's actually charging itself up, and over here I'm getting an output that's much, much larger. And this actually charged up above our double A battery right here we had, which was 2.3 volts. Um, so this is uh, was one point, well three, well about 1.29 from the battery. And now it's up to there, and we still have charging going on over here. So what is this? Where? What? Why is this occurring? Okay, now I take this off. I'm just gonna turn it off. I'm gonna short this back out. All right, here, short it out. Uh, and then this over here is just gonna leak out by itself. Uh, if I bypass this switch, if I just totally take it out there's nothing in this loop and there's no charge there won't be any charge even though I close the loop through the switch by bypassing the switch taking the switch completely out to where it's just basically a loop of wire through some uh, wound up coil just part of that loop it's just wire that's it no power supply whatsoever and then uh, there's nothing here. So if it's a radio wave, I can't see that radio wave. Because it's like maybe the radio wave is in the pico amp or pico watt or pico volt range or even nano watt. It's so small I can't see it. Maybe I'm shorting the tiny little radio signal and somehow amplifying the radio signal. I don't know. I, I just don't know. I can't figure it out. I'm pulsing absolutely nothing. And when I charge this up and pulse this power, I end up with way more energy. Obviously more energy over here. And this, not only that, this charges itself up. I don't have to put any energy into this loop. And the energy just appears. Uh, so another thing I thought of was... what. You gotta look at what is happening inside of our MOSFET switch. Oh, and by the way, this doesn't really work that well with transistors. Uh, there is some effect, but it's so small it's not even worth mentioning. This seems, this effect seems to manifest with just MOSFETs. And I'll provide a schematic. This is a 740 uh, IRF 740 for Earth. <laughs> Earth 740 MOSFET, and uh, I just don't understand. I mean, there's a current running from the source to the gate of, of the MOSFET. If it's a transistor, then the trigger current is from the emitter to the collector, and I did meter that. I did put the meter in between pin 3 and that gate resistor right here. To measure, you know, the current, and I even put another capacitor right there to block the DC pulses that's triggering this, the where it shows no current triggering it at all, and this actually increased even more, which makes absolutely no sense to me. And uh, so I'm going to show you that too, uh, right now. Okay, what we got here is a meter reading the trigger current in our switch. Uh, 
going into our gate resistor and then uh, pin 3 of our chip. That's what's triggering the trigger current, which is like several hundred microamps the trigger. But not only that, I'm blocking that with a capacitor, or we should be blocking it, because capacitors block DC currents. And this chip is just pulsing this current uh, as a trigger current through our switch. But I think I'm blocking it with this capacitor. It should be. And uh, so this diode, I'm just, that's just, I'm just using that as a posting the hold the alligator clip on, and that's it. So I'm reading the current through the meter here, um, being blocked by this capacitor, and I'm blocking the trigger current going p between pin three and uh, off the uh, gate right here, and going through the gate resistor. Okay, so I check this out. I'll take this off, and this is what I was meaning by like just completely. I believe blocking the trigger current right here, and we get a massively bigger amount of voltage, several volts out over here. No power supply whatsoever. I just don't get it. I don't get it. Look at that voltage, and look at the trigger current. I mean, that's like even on a, a negative, even. Uh, now, if we look at the AC, yes, there's some AC going on here, but I, I, we can't rely on this meter reading for, it's a high frequency, this is only met for 60 hertz, this is like 48,000 hertz. So if you look at the AC, the DC... It's basically nothing there. Not even one microamp because I'm blocking it. So the, where the heck is this coming from? Where is that coming from? And I can short it right here. Take the short off. And it's always there. I don't know why. I don't know what it is. Um, even if we look at the uh, amperage, which isn't very much. Now, this isn't a lot of power. I mean, that's 82 microamps. When we just short it directly onto the meter without a resistance of any kind. But nevertheless, it is a power that is there. It's not too terribly large amount, but it's significant enough to be like, you know, this is possibly the microwatt range and maybe on the brink of milliwatt range. But this is significant voltage, which I can pull current out of it's significant it's not uh absorb you know it's not huge but it's enough to show what what is this where is this coming from exactly it's just a loop of wire and there's no power supply all right so next i want to show you what power there actually is in this loop when we bypass the switch okay so now we've added a little jumper wire right here right there that bypasses takes our loop and bypasses the switch so it's going across the emitter and the collector if it's a transistor but this is a mosfet so it's going across the source and the uh let me see what is the, the source and the drain so we're just completely bypassing that so we can see if there's something emanating from our chip or somewhere over here in our connecting uh, wires to the power supply or something emanating from this circuit to over here in this loop okay so nothing in this capacitor and nothing over here in this capacitor and I, I switched this back i left the capacitor in here blocking the trigger current too because that actually improves whatever is flowing through here. So, turn it on again. And there's nothing. So, so nothing is emanating from this switch and the circuit. And there's like maybe 10 millivolts over here. Which is nothing uh, in this capacitor voltage here. In our loop. So, there's nothing going on. It doesn't look like any kind of 
you know, radio wave. I'm going to turn it off. And it's, you know, it's just nothing there. That's to be expected. Um, so, that's what's happening here. And I don't know what it is. Uh, I thought maybe, you know, possibly there's something emanating from the MOSFET itself. Um, but, I would like you guys, you builders out there, to replicate this for yourselves. I'll provide the... Uh, breadboard schematic and regular diagram so you can just build this thing in like five minutes uh, provide the part lists you can do this so you can see what I'm talking about and maybe help me figure out exactly what it is we're looking at when we pulse absolutely no power or energy uh, there is a gain in this loop and the primary and the secondary of this coil Okay, and this is to show that the meters have nothing to do with this effect either. So, uh, I got this shorted. Take the short off. And I will take the meter off as well. Okay. And take the meter off this one as well. Okay. Turn it on. Let this build up a little bit in charge. We have the meters disconnected. So, and I had that shorted to zero before I took that off and turned this on. Okay, that's probably good enough. Let's take that off. Let's see what we got over here. Putting the meter back on there. 1.10 volts. And over here, put the meter back on. And 3.54 volts. And uh, I can turn this on and sort out this capacitor right here to zero. And got that. Okay, take the short off. Right back to 1.17 over here. Short this two to nothing. Uh, take it off. Right back where it was before. So the meters don't have anything to do with this effect either. So uh, thanks for watching. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and please share this. See you.